Hello and welcome to the second episode of IB Physics Help video podcast. Today's topic, working with vectors. How can we add two vectors? Can we multiply vectors? Can we multiply a vector by a scalar? The answer to all these questions and much more in today's episode. In the previous podcast, I presented the two different types of physical quantities, scalars and vectors. Today, we are going to concentrate on vectors. In diagrams, a vector is represented by an arrow. The arrow indicates the direction of the vector and its length is proportional to the magnitude of the vector. In writing, we distinguish a vector by putting an arrow above its symbol. If we want to indicate the magnitude of a vector, we can either use a symbol similar to the one used to indicate the absolute value of a number, or we can simply omit the overhead arrow. In textbooks, you may find different ways of indicating the vector character of a quantity. Using boldface italic type is quite common. In the previous episode, force was given as an example of a vector quantity. In today's episode, I'd like to use in some of my examples a different one displacement. In general, displacement refers to a moving object that changes its position. Displacement is a vector that points from a body's initial position towards its final position. The magnitude of the displacement is the length of the shortest line between the initial and the final position. In simple words, displacement is represented by an arrow drawn from the initial position to the final position. Do not confuse displacement with distance traveled. Distance is simply the length of the actual path followed by a moving object. Distance is a scalar. The magnitude of the displacement is always less than or equal to the distance traveled. Now we can move on and discuss the addition of two or more vector quantities. The outcome of adding two vectors is another vector called the resultant vector. It represents the vector sum of the two vectors. Let's consider the following example. A person walks from location A to location B and then later to C. The two displacements AB and BC correspond to each of the two segments of the journey. The orange arrow AC indicates the total displacement for the entire journey and it represents the vector sum of the other two. Bear in mind that the plus sign used in the context of vectors represents the vector sum of two vectors and not simply the sum of their magnitudes. In this example I used one of the most common methods of adding vectors graphically, the polygon method. In some books this method is called head to tail or tail to tip or triangle of vectors method. If you need to add two vectors, move or translate one of the vectors until its tail reaches the tip of the other vector. In the process you need to make sure that the orientation of the vector is not changed. The resultant vector is the one obtained by connecting the tail of the first vector and the tip of the second one. This method can be used to add any number of vectors. The order in which the vectors are added does not matter. Another very common method used to add two vectors is the parallelogram method. The first step in this method is to move either of the two vectors in such a way that the tails or the origins coincide. The next step is to draw a parallelogram using the two vectors as two of its adjacent sides. The diagonal of the parallelogram that goes through the common origin of the two vectors gives us the direction and the length of the resultant vector, in our diagram the orange vector. Again, in both methods shown so far, it is essential that the arrows representing our vectors are drawn to scale. A slightly easier method can be used to add vectors in a one-dimensional situation. In this case, 
Both vectors can only have two possible directions along a line, to the right or to the left, for example. If we choose a direction as our positive direction, then we can indicate the orientation of any vector using positive and negative numbers. Let's say that our positive direction is to the right. Then a vector represented by the number 2, plus 2 to be more specific, indicates a vector directed to the right and of magnitude 2. Number minus 3 indicates a vector pointing to the left and of magnitude 3. The resultant vector is simply the sum of the two numbers representing the vectors we want to add. In this case, minus 3 plus 2 equals minus 1. The resultant vector has a magnitude of 1 and its direction is to the left. Let's take another quick example. A vector represented by the number minus 3 and the other by the number minus 2. The resultant vector is represented by the number minus 5, which means magnitude 5 direction to the left. Now a general point about vector addition. Vectors can be added in any order. The resultant of A added to B is the same as the resultant of B added to A. We say that the vector addition is commutative. So far, we've covered vector addition. The next logical step is to discuss about vector subtraction. First, let's start by asking ourselves what is the meaning of a negative of a vector. Let's consider the vector shown on the screen. What does minus v mean in this case? Minus v is a vector that has the same magnitude as v but opposite direction. Let's get back now to vector subtraction. We define the difference a minus b of two vectors as the vector sum of a and minus b. We've covered so far two basic operations involving vectors, addition and subtraction. We can ask ourselves a simple question. Can we multiply two vectors? The simple answer is yes. However, ordinary multiplication is not directly applicable to vectors. In fact, there are two different types of products of vectors. Scalar product, also called dot product, and vector product, also called cross product. An in-depth analysis of this topic is beyond the scope of this video presentation and is not part of the IB syllabus. As you probably remember, there are two types of physical quantities, scalars and vectors. Is it possible to add scalars to vectors? The answer is no. However, it is possible to multiply a vector by a scalar. Let's consider a vector a and a scalar s. The resultant of multiplying the vector by a scalar is a new vector p that has the following properties. Its magnitude is equal to the magnitude of a multiplied by s. Its direction is the same as a if the scalar is a positive number and opposite to a if the scalar is a negative number. Let's consider two cases, s equals 1.5 and s equals minus 2. The resultant of multiplying vector a by s is shown on the screen. We've covered several operations involving scalars and vectors. Let's now move on and discuss another topic related to vectors, the components of a vector. 